Thanks so much for tuning in to yet another episode of Insight, where we try and marry the minds of a journalist, an investor, and an industry participant about a particular theme. The topic in conversation for this week is the, well, lamely put the internet of things, but essentially the business of internet and what is it that companies which are using the internet or digital India as a means of business uh, do over the course of the next few quarters, a few years? How large can this become? And I think it is anybody's guess, but it pays to try and understand what some of the most intellectual minds are thinking. Let me first get in our investor, investing mind on the show today is Pankaj Muraka of Renaissance Investment Managers. And he joins us to talk about why is it that he is constructive on this pocket. Pankaj, great having you. Thanks for joining in on Insight. Um, tell us a bit about why is it that you believe that the internet-led businesses are forces to reckon with? Thanks, Neeraj. I think, Neeraj, we are going through a very, uh, very exciting transition in India. If you look at India's entire internet economy, it's still very small, about hundred odd billion dollars, which which is just about three percent of India's GDP. Uh, while government estimates uh, that uh, India's internet economy will become one trillion dollars by the end of this decade, our own estimates suggest that we can at least comfortably get to something like five hundred billion dollars out there which effectively means uh, India's internet economy, which is about 3% of GDP, will get to something like close to about 9 to 10% of India's GDP. So it becomes pretty exciting. I just want to set the context for it. If you uh, compare this with the Indian IT services, I've lived all my life through the uh, IT evolution in India. The uh, IT industry started evolving in early 80s. Infosys was set up in 1981. Yeah, uh, and now uh, IT exports currently are about 250 billion dollars, and we are saying that, or we are expecting by 2030, India's IT exports will cross 500 billion dollars. So it took 50 years for IT industry to uh, get to 500 billion dollars of IT exports uh, by 2030, and uh, India's internet economy started evolving only after the global financial crisis in 2008. So what IT services did uh, in 50 years, uh, India's internet economy will do in 25 years. And then you compare the market cap. So the market cap of, of all the listed IT companies is about 350 odd billion dollars. And the listed internet companies are just about 35 billion dollars. Uh, so I think there's a tremendous uh, opportunity in India's internet ecosystem because that's one ecosystem which is growing two, three times our normal GDP growth. And there's a huge amount of value or shareholder wealth that will be created in the India's internet ecosystem over the next 10 years. My belief is probably it will be the fastest growing segment or sector in India and probably the fastest wealth creating segment over the next 10 years. Well, let's get a principal player within this segment, uh, Pankaj. Uh, let's welcome in Sanjeev Bichandani, he needs no introduction. Uh, you can call him a industry veteran. I kind of think of him also as an investing veteran because his business is about investing into multiple such businesses. Let's get him in on the show to try and understand how is it that he's thinking about this pocket. Uh, uh, okay, we should be getting him in a moment um, in the conversation and then try and uh, take it forward with him about his thoughts on the space as well. Sanjeev, great having you. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope all is well. Thank you for calling me. All, all good. Thank you. The pleasure is ours. Um, you know, I, I would love to, or rather me and Pankaj spoke about this, and we would love to divide this conversation with you into two halves. One is to talk to Sanjeev, the investor, uh, to get the larger picture, and then to talk to Sanjeev, the entrepreneur, the, the, the man behind InfoEdge, about how does he see that business taking up? If that is okay with you, I'd love to start with Sanjeev, the investor. Sure. Okay, great. So, so Pankaj was making this point about the size of the internet space in India currently, vis-a-vis -vis IT services, how IT services have grown in their life cycle and how because of Jam Trinity, the government support, uh, the, the whole ecosystem already there, how quick and how pacey can the growth of the internet businesses be? We would love to understand how you think about this. So look, the two businesses are very different, or the two sectors are very different. If you look at IT services, it's largely export-led, indexed by the US economy, it's B2B, right? And therefore, it's a different market, different market size, and different market opportunity. It's also 30 or 40 years old, and therefore matured, right? Uh, the internet sector, by and large, 
for the most part is India focused. So you are dependent on Indian market size. There are some companies that are servicing overseas markets from India, but by and large, it is, it is India focused. And, and therefore, you are indexed to Indian GDP, Indian economy size, Indian market size, in, you know, and, and, and Indian GDP growth. Therefore, the two cannot strictly be compared, right? Uh, because they are different businesses. Internet businesses are by and large, very often more tech and product. Uh, IT is IT services, right? It scales with headcount. Less so now, but it is traditionally scaled with, with headcount. Uh, internet businesses are less service oriented, more product oriented. And they scale less so with headcount, right? So they are they're very different. They both represent good opportunities. Both represent uh, potential profits, and in some cases already profit, as such as InfoEdge. Uh, but but you know they have to be looked at separately and independently. Yeah, most certainly. I'm sure Pankaj would have a throw there. Uh, but just trying to um, uh, think it around, independent of how you look at internet services with, versus anything else, how do you envisage? the growth curve of this to be very often it is said it will be a jacob effect uh, in users yes maybe at some point of time in business and profitability too how do you think about it so we don't look at the sector we look at company by company right uh, and that's how we invest we go bottom up we look at smart entrepreneurs doing interesting stuff we worry about market size later because uh, you know when you're when you're transforming markets when you're creating new markets Market size is hard to predict. And therefore, if you find that there's something useful being done, it's solving an unsolved problem, it's getting some natural attraction. So when we went into Zomato in 2010, they were doing one lakh rupees a month revenue. But the important point was that it was a useful thing. People liked it. We were using it. We liked it. It was solving an unsolved problem. It was growing every month in traffic and traction with zero advertising. The team was good. Uh, and therefore, we went in. And you went in a small amount, four and a half hours. So we said, let's you know, get our toes into the water. Let's see how it goes. The next round was 13 rows and next round, you know, and so on. That's how we went in. So slowly, slowly, small size, nibble, then go in. You, that's the best way to go into early stage companies and early stage markets. You take a lower risk. You, as the company figures it out, you, 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 put in, you put in more money. Sure, but they're no longer, sorry, Pankaj, just before you come in with a question, I just wanted some clarity, Sanjeev, there. So most of these businesses are no longer small businesses. A lot of them are listed as well. When you think about how these businesses or this space can morph, even though you look at it bottom up, the, the, uh, the theme by itself needs to have that tailwind for a company within that theme to do well. Just trying to understand how do you look at that role? So I, think, I think if you look at companies that are listed, um, those that... Some are making profits, such as India Mart. Uh, some, I think, will begin to make profit in the next year or two. Right? Uh, Zamato policy was up. I would put in that bracket. They are likely to make a profit in, next, in, in the foreseeable future. Right? Uh, so I think once you get to profit, you know, you are over the hub, you are out of the woods, uh, you are now be looked at differently by investors, um, and uh, it'll be all right then. Okay. Pankaj? You want to weigh in? Sure. Sanjeev, so I think one of the bigger questions all these internet companies or the startups face is a trade-off between scale and profitability. Because you want profitability, but you want profitability with scale. And somehow, for whatever reason, the world of finance has inverted the whole barter system that existed between investors, companies, and customers. The traditional model of business is you provide services to the customers, make money, and give it back to shareholders. And somehow we have inverted this whole model over the last 15 years where you take money from shareholders and give discount to customers to acquire customers. Yeah. And which is where these companies are caught in terms of trying to trade off between building scale much faster and or try to strike profitability. So meaning what is your advice or when you look at investing companies uh, and uh, in some sense in some of your businesses where you've been into investment for a long period of time, what's the right path and how do you strike a balance between the two? Any old school, uh, you know, we like to get customers, we like to serve customers, we like to sell to customers at a price that's higher than our cost, and in the process make a profit and then create shareholder value. But post 2008 9, post the global financial crisis, uh, there was so much liquidity because the Fed would print its way out of trouble all the time, and this money would find itself, it finds its way all over the world India, China, private markets, public markets, there were asset price inflation everywhere and too much liquidity. Now, when that happens, you know, 
पैसों की कीमत कम हो जाती है जब पैसों की कीमत कम होती है ना पीपल गेट मोर मनी एक्चुअली नीड एंड दे यूटिलाइज इट टू गेट स्केल नेवर माइंड प्रॉफिट बिकॉज द कॉम्पिटिशन इज द सेम थिंग बिकॉज इफ आई डोंट डू इट एंड माई कॉम्पिटिशन आई एम गुड लूज आउट because of my competition is also being funded by the same capital and that becomes a problem and therefore incentives therefore are different and they were different until about a year year and a half ago uh and when the liquidity got tightened when the fed began to contract its balance sheet interest rates went up suddenly everything changed they hey guys capital efficiency is back so companies have to pivot entrepreneurs have to you know now go back to what was prudent in economics and many of them i must say are successfully making the transition some are not so this is the year of reckoning where the the, the when the dust settles the the grain would have been separated from the chaff sure i am of the opinion that that free capital is now gone forever next 10 years we are not seeing going to see that free capital come back in the world and the cost of capital is real so i think a lot of these businesses will have to make a choice uh, uh, and probably probably choose profitability over break even no, i i don't know no. if if i don't think there's a choice you have to do profitability over growth the and other related, really, and ideally after that profitability with growth sure the other related question i have sanjeev and i'm saying this again i relate this to uh, india's it industry because i started my career as an it analyst and i looked through the whole evolution of it industry so way back in early 90s and mid 90s we had something like 2000 it companies in india now when the sector is reasonably large we're going to do over 250 odd billion dollars of it export this year and probably double it up by the end of this decade if you look at the it companies around there are 50 odd listed it companies with a market cap of 350 billion dollars which effectively means 80% of those companies which existed or emerged in 90s in the early part of the evolution of the sector have not survived it's very common uh, for uh, in my experience to see lot of companies mushroom in a emerging sector because startups emerge and they do get funded but eventually 80% of those startups fail meaning how would you how it services many of the startups may not have failed they may have consolidated several of them right uh, so it in that sense uh, was slightly lower risk than a product company uh, which was getting free money आईटी में ना आपको हर एक ऑन एवरी हेड काउंट यू मेड मार्जिन सो इन दैट सेंस यू हैड एज लॉन्ग एज यू वुड गेट द बिजनेस एंड एग्जीक्यूट द प्रोजेक्ट यू आर मेकिंग मनी राइट यहां पे यू नो यू आर स्पेंडिंग मनी रेजिंग मनी बिल्डिंग अ प्रोडक्ट होपिंग कस्टमर विल वांट इट द कस्टमर डजंट वांट इट यू आर डेड अनलेस यू गेट मोर मनी राइट व्हिच व्हिच सेवरल डेज फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम and you know your your business viability was disguised by the fact that you you might even selling below variable cost and therefore as for the buying but they don't really prefer you they prefer the price sure but do you think uh, eventually let's say uh, 15 years out 70% of the startups would fail uh it's quite possible i mean whether 70% 60% 80% 50% i don't know but look several will fail uh, you know the, the nature of early stage entrepreneurship venture funded uh in a product space in a tech product space it's darwinian sure M- many try only few make it this is entrepreneurship 101 many try few make it it's darwinian sure yeah which is what leads me to the conclusion that uh, if you get the winners right then uh, the few will survive but the organizations and businesses who survive so the challenge is- pankaj is that if the ones that are going to fail uh get a lot of money and then fail then it becomes a systemic problem right so sure. the traditional model was the pehle angel seed round low friend and family mm. low right uh, get your product market fit get your concept right proof of concept ek bar wo ho gaya then you get venture capital to get growth and that is lower risk it also it is more capital efficient but jab paisa zyada hota hai market mein everybody starts giving large rounds before proof of concept at idea stage and that becomes a challenge so so can i just wade in sanjeev and and then of course we'll move to infoage also but just one quick thing uh, you started off by talking about how and and pankaj corroborated it about how free capital is out of the window we saw the valuations assigned to an uh, uh, amazon or what have you in the west because of the easy capital do you reckon that the way to value an internet business in the current decade 
would be materially different than what's happened in the first two years of the experience in India? So, so, so the method of valuation will probably remain the same because you are loss-making companies. How do you value loss-making companies? You look at traffic, you look at traction, you look at, you look at uh, GMV, you look at uh, unit economics, right? So the method of valuation is the same, but the actual multiple or the value ascribed to it will be will be moderated. Yeah, but I, I did hear you say that your investing companies as well, and maybe a few others are talking of paths to profitability, maybe forced by capital markets, but they are talking of yes, that. Actually, and therefore, we, my we, question. No, no, we've been saying it for a long time, right? The okay. okay. Because, you know, it's just we, we, we always said, but for 15 years, we were wrong. <laughs> okay. So, and hence my question since companies are now talking of paths to profitability, do you reckon that the decade might see the valuation? I mean, okay, let, let me rephrase my question. Sorry, Pankaj, maybe you have one more question, but I'd just like to rephrase my question. And Sanjeev, please humor me. Uh, but here's my question. Uh, let's say a company's talking of path to profitability, getting to profitability, maybe forsaking some bit of scale in order to attain that profitability. What do you think listed capital markets will value more in the course of this decade? Obviously, you need both. You need profit and growth, or you need visibility of profit and visibility of growth, right? It's a future promise. See, companies are valued on future promise. What's your future promise? If profit is not in your future promise, you have a problem. If growth is not in your future promise, you still have a problem. But at least if your profit will be sustainable, you will not get a valuation. And you can get the valuation tomorrow as you get back profit. So I would prioritize profit over growth today. Okay. Because, because then you're sustainable. Uh, sorry, Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, sure. One last one from my side. Uh, when I think about your investing business, uh, probably two two questions I'll bundle in them one. Uh, obviously, Zomato and Policy Bazaar have created huge value for info shareholders and has done well, incredibly well for you as an investment. So which ones you think are the future jewels in the portfolio? And more Can importantly... Uh, sorry, carry on. Yeah, and more importantly... Given that now the sector is squeezed for funding, as we call it, there's a funding winter, a valuation will be much more uh, moderated or fair in that sense from what they have been in the internet sector. And given the fact that you have operating business which throws huge amount of cash flow, does that mean there is a significant opportunity for you to make some meaningful strategic investments which could create huge value for input shareholders over the longer period of time? I guess strategic investments are, are opportunistic and they're lumpy. And they are few and far between, right? Uh, and 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 therefore, uh, you know, wait and watch. I'd say, but yes, there is opportunity, and we are alive for all opportunities, and we are constantly looking. But there's nothing around there right now. Okay, as far as financial investments are concerned, which is what we do through the through our venture fund, those are ongoing. Uh, those are riskier. They are more early stage. Uh, they are spread over a larger portfolio. In fund one, we invested in across two, 27 or 28 companies, right? In about two and a half, three years time. Uh, and those will see some blowouts and have seen some blowouts. And that's the nature of the beast. But having said that, both from our balance sheet and from our venture fund, there are a few companies showing promise. Of course, uh, you know, we are now uh, recalibrating our expectations uh, given the new environment and given the paucity of uh, capital in the market. Right. Um, but you know, several are showing promise. I mean, you know, Shipsy is showing promise. I think uh, Lumic is showing promise. I think uh, Shiprocket is looking good. Exigo is looking good. There are, there are at least a bunch of companies that are looking good. But are they out of the woods? Are they at profit? Are they, you know, definitely going to go public in the next six months? No. We are far away from that. Okay. So it's work in progress. We look forward to future Zomatos and policy bazaars from you. Thank you so much. Uh, no, I have a last couple of questions before we thank you. And Pankaj, if you have more, sure, please wait in. But just last couple of questions from my end regarding Info Edge now. Um, more often than not, Sanjeev, comparisons are drawn to past performances in other countries about what scale could be like in various business. Now, I heard you start off this conversation by saying that, you know, in, in some sense, India might be different. Maybe you didn't say it. But a lot of people talk about how India is different, right? You don't equate the per capita of India to some of the other countries because it's a bit of a misnomer because of the K-shaped nature of the consumer as well. My question to you is, when you think of what scale can any of your businesses attain over the course of the next 10 to 15 years, how do you imagine that scale? So you know something, uh, no matter 
what I imagine or say or think, uh, you know, uh, the truth is I'm always wrong, right? Uh, so I began my professional career in 1984, right, straight out of college. Uh, and I worked in advertising in Lintas in Delhi and then Bombay. And it was a very different business and industry landscape then, right? And a lot of the buzz, a lot of the growth, a lot of the investment, a lot of the increase in employment has come from companies and sectors that did not even exist then or barely existed, right? Uh, so mobile telephony did not exist. Uh, private sector landline did not exist. Uh, you know, private sector insurance did not exist. Private sector banks barely existed. IT services did not exist. IT enabled services did not exist. Internet did not exist. Uh, mobile apps did not exist. Uh, you know, private sector airlines did not exist. Uh, so you look, uh, you know, public part, private partnership and infrastructure did not exist, right? Uh, airport being privatized was un unthinkable, right? Uh, so, you know, the government through its liberalization policy has uh, transformed an infrastructure sector like airline into a consumer sector, right? Uh, so, you know, there's a sea change. If you ask me 15, 20 years from now, what will happen? No matter what I predict, chances are I'll be wrong, but I do know change will happen, right? And I do know there'll be growth. So when we, okay, here, and one final nugget, when we raised our first round of capital uh, from ICICI Venture uh, for Nokri in InfoEdge in the year 2000, uh, we were doing 3 lakhs a month revenue, which is 36 lakhs a year. In my wild, I, I give wild projections, right? And those wild projections uh, were, you know, four years out, we'll do one crore a month. That's 12 crores a year, right? Four years out, we did 84 crores. We were wrong by 7x. The market surprised us. So when markets transform, huge growth can happen beyond your imagination. So I don't know. If you told me in 2010, so, you know, when I, in 2010, when we were going to, into Zamato, it was called Foodie Bay then, the pushback I got from my board was, Sanjeev, are you sure, you know, restaurants are mom and pop businesses, only five, six cities need restaurant listings. That time Zamato was not doing delivery. It was doing only listings. Uh, you know, this can be a maximum 20 crore company. Are you sure you can? I said, look, uh, we don't know. Uh, they produced a good thing. People want it. Uh, the team seems great. There's, it's only four and a half crores. Let's go in and see what happens. Right, and Zomato happened. I could never have predicted Zomato would be where it is in 2010 when you went in. So today I do not know. I will, I'll be, you know, I will be completely speculating if I were to tell you I don't know. Good team, good, good company, good business, good customers. Go for the ride. Good things will happen. On that nugget, we thank you for joining us today on the show, Sanjeev. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, bye, Dhiraj. Bye, Pankaj. Thank you. Thanks, Sanjeev. Wow. Well, that was that was a, a brilliant nugget, all right. Pankaj, I want to, um, two questions to you before we uh, polish this off. One is, same question that I asked Sanjeev, you know, this, um, this whole comparison of per capita, scale, etc., at times might be a misnomer. So when you are thinking of scale for an internet business in India, how is it that you imagine what is it that the company can do? Well, we do try to Neeraj, you know, create some sort of scenarios in terms of what could be the potential size of opportunity. Um, we understand that India is a slightly different market than the way this whole space is evolved in US and in China, because we, for example, in India, we have created digital public utilities, uh, the likes of Aadhaar, UPI, where we've commoditized a lot of uh, uh, businesses and internet where people still make a lot of money in US and China. For example, Low ticket size payments in US and China, you will still end up paying a fees, whereas it's completely free in India. So uh, we take all those nuances in uh, account, yet uh, whichever we dissect it in many of the sectors, or most of the sector, we think that the uh, opportunity size is very, very large because the way, uh, you know, uh, given the large size of Indian economy and the growth, and more importantly, we are seeing a very accelerated adoption of digital by customers now over the last few years, especially post-pandemic, because essentially for price-conscious customers, digital goods and services are available at a price point which are much more sharper and cheaper than what they available physically. It is far more convenient, uh, so it's convenience that counts for customers. At the same time, from a business point of view, a lot of these businesses have been able to reach out to customers in tier two, tier three cities without a physical infrastructure having a shop uh, which would have taken them uh, you know, 
15, 20 years. So a typical traditional, let's say, consumer business would have taken 15 years to have a pan India presence. Now by yeah. what we bring digital, they can do it in a matter of two or three years. So I think the opportunity size remains very large. Yes, but also these businesses get consolidated at a very early stage of their, li their life cycle, which effectively means the profit pool for businesses which survive or eventually survive will be very large. For example, uh, let's say talk about food delivery. Now, as compared to, let's say, any other traditional industry, let's say cement as an industry, it's been around in India for the last 70, 80 years. We still have 50 cement companies in India. But when it comes to food delivery, there are only two players in India. So then the profit pool at the industry level will be distributed among the two players. And whenever you have an oligopoly industry structure, there is a pricing power which prevails in the industry. So lots of these internet businesses are turning oligopoly at a very early stage of the evolution, which effectively means they, are, they eventually in the longer term, they'll be highly profitable. And then the runway for those profits, the period over which businesses can make extraordinary profits will be very long. And that is what adds to the value that an investor ascribes. Because one, we look at profit pool. And secondly, what's the duration over which these businesses can enjoy extraordinary profit? And I think these internet businesses, because of the oligopoly nature of most of these industries, will have a very long duration of extraordinary profits. And which is what especially excites me uh, when we look at a lot of these businesses from a much more longer term perspective. Very interesting. Yeah, and which is what my final question would have been, uh, Pankaj. Um, so you, you give us some insight about food delivery, right? I'm not going to ask you whether stocks are buys or sells. So these are not recommendations, but more trying to understand why does a particular business look attractive or not look attractive? So you give some insights about food delivery. What else uh, have you bet on, for example, in this space? There are maybe eight or nine or 10 different businesses, slightly differentiated models, all internet back. What have you liked and why have you liked it? So uh, we like the fintech space and we own Paytm uh, because we think payments is a huge uh, business and it will keep growing in India. Meaning, But they're not making money, I mean, as of now. Or UPI has ensured that they don't make money. So why do you like it? Sure. So now if you look at Paytm, uh, they've achieved operational break-even uh, last quarter. Our assessment is probably in eight quarters time, it will be a company which will be doing anywhere between uh, close to $200 million of EBITDA. And that's pretty huge because it's not a lot of low ticket payments are free, but you do make money in payments as well. And more importantly, it becomes an instrument for us to do massive customer acquisition at a very low cost. And then you cross sell to those customers, uh, which is how Paytm's business model is evolving. And I think with about uh, you know high teens market share in India's payment ecosystem, uh, the the value of the enterprise probably a uh, few years out will be significantly higher than where it is trading today, and which is why we like it. And most of these businesses are very capital efficient because once you reach break even, the invested capital is pretty low, which effectively means uh, a large part of your operating uh, profits are turned into cash flow back to shareholders. So we think these businesses can emerge as a cash machines over next three to five years. And this is still early days because we think payments in India can keep growing at mid teens to high teens over the next 15, 20 years as India grows. So I think there's a path to profitability in uh, each of these businesses. And uh, sooner these businesses achieve consolidation because a significant part of losses were driven by more by competitive intensity and competitors getting funded by, if I can say so, irrational money from private equity investors. And I think that game is over uh, because there is no more free lunch available in any part of the world. So these businesses sooner or later will have to pivot towards profitability. And I think there will be massive consolidation in the sector as a result of which my assessment is 80% of these startups will not survive. They will close down. But the balance 20% will survive will create immense amount of value for uh, all stakeholders, including shareholders. And which is what excites me when I look at this opportunity, you know, from a slightly longer term uh, time horizon. In fact, I must admit that after a very long time, uh, I feel very excited about a, uh, about a theme or about a sector which can be a multi-decadal growth story uh, in India. IT was a great growth story uh, in the you know mid 90s and uh, late 90s when these companies were growing at 30 40 50 percent and they grew that for 10 15 years now it's a matured sector the sector growth the rates are down to seven eight percent i think these internet businesses can keep growing at 25 30 percent for the next 10 years when you get such high growth rates in sectors 
then obviously there's an immense amount of wealth or value that is created for shareholders at some point of time. And which is what I'm looking forward to in the IT sector. Great. Well, that, thank you so much. Uh, there's some special insights and, and, and you joining in the conversation and asking those questions to Sanjeev um, tremendously helps as well. Much appreciate you taking the time out and being with us on this special show of insight. Thank you so much, Neeraj. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you and viewers. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.